Hello and good day to you. My name is Nate and this is Limping Through Models with Nate and this workbench in just a few moments will be teeming with creativity because you're about to see the final part of the Moonshiner's Cabin build including the build of the diorama. So with all that in mind, let's get started. The kit comes with these sticky backed metal sheets which are used to make the corrugated metal roof. In addition to the sheets is a nifty jig used to make the corrugations. I cut the metal sheet into 7 16th inch strips to fit the jig. Using the corrugated paddle, I press the metal sheet face down into the indentations. With all the pieces cut and pressed, it's time to paint. I have an unused board that I'm going to use as the base for the painting. Using some Tamiya masking tape, I make multiple rows to affix the metal strips to the board and proceed to lay out all the cut pieces. Painting the corrugated roof starts with a base coat of a darker brown. These sheets have been through many rainstorms and, once again, the tenants of the cabin are all about moonshine and not property value. After laying out the first layer, I move to a lighter brown and add additional accents to the strips. The final layer is a bright orange to mimic the oxidized metal. This is ever so slightly dabbed on the strips, focusing on what would be the bottoms of the corrugated sheets. An additional step not seen here is I sprayed a layer of dull coat on the strips to seal in the paint. After all the strips have been removed from the board, it's time to add the sheets to the roof. It would be quite difficult to affix these sheets to a constructed roof, however, I have a second kit with unused roof pieces. I use these pieces as a template for the placement of the sheets, allowing me to cut them to the exact size for the corresponding roof piece on the completed roof. I add a single strip of double-sided tape to the apex of each roof piece and start to add sheets from the outside in. I leave about a 32nd of an inch overhang on each outside edge of the roof. Excess roof is trimmed and set to the side. All the roof templates have been completed and are ready to be attached to their respective roof section. I had to use an X-Acto knife to wiggle under the metal strips to expose the sticky bottom for attachment. Additionally, I had to start from the inside out when laying the sheets on the roof as I had laid them outside in on the template. No big deal, really. As I complete the sections that allow it, I add the roof caps to cover the seams between roof sections. I drop the roof back onto the cabin to attach the top section of the chimney. I need to attach this in such a way that it allows the roof to be removed. And the main cabin roof is done. Now comes the fun part of the build, the diorama base. What you see before you is my brain physically regurgitating hours of video and literature on scenery concepts before your very eyes. The first step is a base coat using some stucco-like paint I had lying around. I give it a good shake and start painting. However, all the stucco is stucco to the bottom of the canister. I had to dig it up and shake it out to get the proper paint mix to continue. I cover all the areas of the base and get as close to the edges where the cabin will eventually sit. After drying, I tip the base on its side to remove these little pebbles all over the base. I add another base coat color. This time it's a dark brown that will serve as the muddy base for the tire tracks made on the access road and the driveway. Using lighter and lighter paints, I attempt to blend the edges of the brown into the rest of the base coat. I add the same base coat to the area I imprinted the moonshine still on as well. The next layer will be comprised of various types of blended turf. I start with green blended turf and will use scenic cement to affix it to the base. I'll be working in sections as the scenic cement is quite thin. I slather as much glue as I can on a section 
and then proceed to sprinkle a liberal amount of blended turf over the top. I continue to do this until all the necessary sections of the base are covered. Using a pipette, I drop additional glue on areas that are not fully covered and sprinkle more turf on those sections. I give a little tap ski to the base on the desk to remove excess turf and happen to expose a few bare spots that I'll have to fix later. Speaking of fixing, I take the base outside to give a good douse of scenic cement using a spray bottle. There are a couple of pools that develop that were easily fixed by sopping it up with a paper towel. Back at the bench, I take the pipette and attempt to cover those spots again with glue, then a layer of turf. I attempted to make a concoction of dirt slash gravel for the access road. I had some fine and medium ballast in different colors that I combined in a mug and mixed about as best I could. I started to apply this to the base, however, I didn't like the way it looked, so I had to scrap the whole idea. I decided to go with the darker fine ballast exclusively for the dirt roads and tracks. I worked the ballast with a paintbrush to get it in all the right places, then affix it to the base with scenic cement via the pipette. I added some green blended turf to the middle of the road as a base for future embellishment. This too gets fixed with the scenic cement. I picked up some wooden fence from Woodland Scenic's new fence system to fence in my cabin. I test fit some of the links to make sure I can line up both gates with heavy traffic areas of the scenery. Each fence length has picks at either end of the section used to stick the fence into the base. However, these picks are quite fragile and you'll need to use a drill bit or a stronger pick to start a hole for the fence to go into. Both gate pieces have fence posts on their ends, while most of the other pieces have no fence post on an end. This allows for joining the fence pieces seamlessly. For the smaller gate, I had to take an X-Acto knife and nip off the end post so I could get the boards to line up with the post of the fence section of the larger gate. With all the fence pieces lined up, I attach the fence to the base with super glue and add some turf and scenic glue to hide the shine of the super glue that was used. Now comes the part I'm looking forward to where I take some static grass and apply it to the diorama with the Woodland Scenic Static King applicator. I purchased their static grass starter kit which included a bottle of static tack glue in addition to some various length grass. The Static King mesh cover, called a sieve, is held in place with a screw. I find I don't need this screw to secure the sieve as there are built-in grooves to lock this cap in place. I drop in a fair amount of 7mm grass into the tumbler, undo the tie wrap around the ground wire, and attach the ground wire gator clip to the anchor. I start with the glue, tracing it down the center of the access road, along the edges of the road, and up to the edge of the fence. I place the anchor in the glue as per the instructions and get to grassing. This is my absolute first time attempting static grass application. Looking back and knowing what I know now, I was holding the applicator way too far above the surface on my first pass. Additionally, the anchor was leaving marks in the glue I did not like, so I went straight to the gator clip in the glue for the grounding. After some time, I tap off the excess grass and collect it back into the applicator to have another go covering what I can with the tall grass. With that tall grass in place, I move to apply the shorter grass to the larger areas, getting much closer to the diorama this time. Please note, it does pay to read the instructions. This awesome side view of my progress brought such a sense of accomplishment. What first looked like trampled grass now looks like an unmanaged field that it's in dire need of a green thumb. While the static tack sets, I start on gluing in all the parts of the moonshine still to the diorama. 
My intention is to have the still deep in a wooded area behind the cabin and somewhat obscured from view. To enhance the area it inhabits, I take some leaves from the backyard and drop them in a food processor to be mashed about. I begin to sprinkle these leaves around the still, then branch out from that area and apply leaves to the ground areas where the trees will eventually overhang. With a pipette full of what little scenic cement I had left, I start on cementing the leaves to the diorama. Two things I found out during this build. One, Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement already has an agent in the mix to break the surface tension, so it saves you a step in spraying alcohol all over the diorama. And B, it was a hot day and I am sweating all over this thing. While I'm at it, I moved to lock in the static grass with Scenic Cement as well. Back at the bench, I get to work on assembling the monster of a motor that controls the simple animation of a rocking chair. Using pieces of supplied MDF, I create the enclosure that attaches the motor to the base. I carefully use superglue to attach each piece to the motor, being careful not to glue a moving part. I also take this great care when attaching the spindle to the rotor. I bring the diorama back on the workbench to glue the motor on, only to realize the motor support pieces were backwards and did not line up with the slats in the base. Thankfully, the glue was not set too much and I was able to reverse the support pieces and get them on the motor in the right orientation to attach it to the base. Time to start on the wiring. Off camera, I got the rocking chair painted and assembled. Unfortunately, the rockers were too fragile and broke off during assembly. Using the diagram, I twist the wire pairs. I was going to use solder, but I didn't. I don't really have a profound explanation for that. After getting batteries in place, I flip the switch and lo and behold, there is a working motor. With this new apparatus under the diorama, I needed something to elevate the base. In comes my son's Mega Blocks. He has hundreds of these, he's not going to miss four, right? The cabin is introduced to the base for this all important task of building the front porch. It's important the slats on the porch floor line up with the slats in the base so that the arm of the rocking chair can freely move with the rotor. I implore my measure once, cut once philosophy to cut the middle support post of the porch. With the post glued in place, I look to see that it's level, and surprisingly it is. So I move to add the outside support post for both the deck and the front porch roof, and the front railing to the porch. As I will be moving this diorama around more frequently, I thought it would be a great idea to attach the battery pack, switch, and the Mega Blocks base to the bottom with some hot glue. Now there is still a whole side of this diorama that I need to apply static grass to. To avoid damaging the work on the cabin, I trace the footprint of the cabin onto some balsa wood and cut out that pattern. I line it up with the actual base, and after I am satisfied, I move to attach the faux foundation to the base, being sure the, to line up the chair animation base slat with the slat that was cut into the balsa wood. There were some areas where the foundation did not sit flush with the scenery, so I start picking away at the layers of turf to create a flat surface. With the foundation in place, I take some green paint and color in the remaining bare spots around the foundation. While the paint is still wet, I pack down some blended turf. Excess turf is sucked up with the Woodland Scenics Model Vac. I swear, I'm not shilling for this company. I just like their stuff. I come back to the workbench with the second half of the static grassing done. The grass gets teased with an X-Acto knife. Then I move to remove the balsa wood foundation using a pick. Some of the static tack got on the balsa wood, which required additional cutting to remove from the base. Once clear, I drop the cabin on the base 
and shimmy it around until it rests exclusively on the exposed base. I decide to add some of the brown fine ballast to the underside of where both the front and back porch sits. I use a brush to maneuver the ballast off the exposed base and onto the required areas. A new bottle of scenic cement is cracked open and a pipette is used to seal in the ballast. While I'm at it, I seal in the new static grass too. With the bulk of the scenery done, I apply the glue to the base and attach the cabin to the base, making sure to line up the slats on the front porch and the base. I can now slide the rocking chair into its groove and install the front porch roof. Planks are removed from the sprue and filed at one end. The filed ends are glued into slats pre-cut into the face of the front porch wall and are set on the cross beam between the two porch roof supports. The planks are glued onto the cross beam before the glue for the porch roof is applied. The porch roof is dropped into place and adjusted as needed. Using an Allen wrench, I screw in the rocking chair paddle, flip the switch on the motor, and watch as the chair starts rocking by itself. Not creepy at all. The final step is to add trees. I had a whole tutorial filmed for these trees, but most of the footage got lost in a hard drive failure. I incorporated some framing nails I had into the base of these trees by drilling holes in the trunk for the nail and using Gorilla Glue to attach the nail to the trunk. Using some tacky glue, I jammed these trees into the spots I think they need to be. With everything where I like it to be, I can officially call this diorama done. Here we are, we are at the end. The end is here, and what you see before you is the complete product. The cabin, the diorama, everything looking as beautiful as it can be. Now, I admit to you right now, this is the very first time I've done anything really on this scale. Uh, with scenery and I'm really happy with the result I was able to uh, present to everybody here um, you know this is the first time I've used static grass I've used turf uh, little bits of uh, of leaf making trees things like that and for a first time I think I did uh, pretty well and it can only get better from here and oh that feels really nice and with that I'm going to put a bow on this. This is the end right here. Now I know there's some detail parts I need to put on the inside. Uh, I'll get to that eventually, but it's not something I'm going to uh, hold over this uh, to, to keep this from uh, going out. Uh, but nevertheless, it is a done product. So like, comment, subscribe, do everything you have to do to get to the next video that I'm going to put out on this channel. Because I'm starting a new series and it's called the chicken salad challenge. And if you have any idea or know of the saying about chicken salad, um, you may have an idea of what I'm gonna be doing. And it's gonna be a challenge for me because that's why I called it a challenge. Um, so to find out what that's all about, just uh, stay tuned. And until then, see you next time.